Hello and welcome back to the On The Burst podcast. This is the first episode for 2024 and I'm excited to be back. I'm your coach, Brandon Savage, and I'm joined here by my assistant coach, He's On The Burst, Timmy Moody. How are you? Yeah, good, man. That was really friendly. I really felt the friendliness coming through that introduction. I like that. There was a nice warmth to it. Rugby league is a warm game, mm. and I think it is inclusive to everybody. So the warmth has to go around, and rugby league is always the winner. How are you going? Yeah, well, rugby league's probably uh, the way I describe my love language. Uh, everyone has, you know, touch, uh, terms of endearment, that sort of stuff. If you just, you know, play the footy near me or say footy related things, then that's the best way to get me aroused. I also like to compare rugby league footy. To my love life as well, my my touch life. Um, you on the bench at the moment, or <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even in the starting seventeen. <laughs> yeah. No, but we are back for 2024. You said it could have been done. No one said it couldn't be done, but we did it. We came back. This is the eighth episode. We did seven episodes last year. We wrapped up the year, and this year we're going to go into. This year, we're going to look into this year, but it's going to be a bit different. You, you've got all your podcasts that do the reviews, the previews, and they're the experts. We're not the experts. We're just we're just fans of the game. We watch the game as much as anybody else. We, we love the super coach side of things. So we're looking for things that other people aren't. But first, how was your break? Um, I know a lot of people that probably listen to this listen to our super coach show, so it's a bit redundant going over how a break was again, but how was your break? Yeah, just nothing really to write home about, but things to be grateful for, you know what I mean? So that's probably the best way to sum it up. Do you train the, train the house down? To an extent, yeah. Look, I, I, look I've been to the gym twice since that MG's um, oh, yeah. session. So did arms back-to-back sessions with my, my sister one day, and then I went with her, her boyfriend, and turns out he was on arms. So it was a bit of a slog. But, um, yeah, I'm probably just going to go and train Arnold again. I might just do biceps and that's all I train and just be like that guy that injects himself. Have you seen that guy that's the Russian dude? Oh, my God. There's, There's a, a lot of them on TikTok. <laughs> There's fun. a lot of them on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, I actually – I'm in training – Mm. for the Sports Shed TV charity match, which is February 3rd at Lincoln Oval. I've mentioned in the last podcast that we did, but um, I'm playing. I'm starting centre, so I want to make sure that I'm not puffed out. Yeah, so, it's a lot of fun. Like there's, As you mentioned, you can buy tickets to go watch the game. If you are in the area, grab a couple of mates, come down by yourself, just cheer Sabs along. If you can't get there, you can also get it on um, like as a pay-per-view. There, there's a live stream. It's going to be about $5. and Much cheaper than the it. UFC sort of events, and I'm sure you'll be choking a few people out or something if things don't go your way. So That's it. Everyone's going to see a bit of blood either way. I'll be tuning in from Gladstone to watch with a couple of my mates. Um, I'm really excited. I think it's fun. I think yeah, everyone that watches the pod should – Get around him, just like, you know, cheer him on. It's, For it's good sure. to, uh, I, I to lace had, his boots back up, mate. I actually had someone message me asking, what are you paying to score a try? And I said, dollar two, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm, You're I'm definitely scoring, scoring a try. Scoring a oh, try. Just from watching him play Oz Tag. He, he'll he'll hog it, but he'll he'll, he'll make sure I'm he play, gets there. I'm playing centre, so I think I'll get the right amount of ball. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm... I mean, he's no Latrell Mitchell. I don't want to talk <laughs> no, him no, up no, too no. much. No. Um, I think what I'll do is... I might roam later in the game. So chime Mm. in the back line. If I'm playing right, when the ball is shifting left, I'll just chime in. Could you? (laughs) I'm just here trying to think of who, which player in the NRL I would compare you to be the Audi version of. Like, I'm really struggling. Hey, like, I, I, you're very roamy. So I don't want to give you like you're not you're not a turbo. You don't have that crashness. You, you are a little bit. You've got a little bit of a license. Teddy. No, he's more fullbacky. I feel like you're Connor Tracy. Yeah, you're utility-ish. Yeah, but you're a bit. Oh, I don't know. Look, I'll come back to. Let me let me put it in the in Mark the comments. Burden. I'll put it in the comments for people by the time they get there. Oh, like, this is doing my I, head I, in. I don't want to sit here and you know, um, mumbo jumbo over. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> but there's, there's there's definitely. I've got a feel like. I've got a vibe of it. I just can't put my finger on it. But nah, that's good. That's good. Anyway, bit, of a, bit, bit pretentious, bit of a pretty boy. Probably roll his <laughs> sleeves up a bit. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I will. Um, yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, I'm st- I'm stuck now. I want yeah. one of these. I want to know who this player is. Anyway, maybe don't. a Herbie Farnworth. Like, but yeah. maybe a Herbie Farnworth. Nowhere near as good looking, and 
so much more uncoordinated. Un- understandable. I am uncoordinated, but I make it work. Yeah. I make it work. Um, so, yeah, tickets are in the bio, Sports Shed TV. I'm so excited for that. Only two weeks away. Let's get into the NRL news. <laughs> AJ Brimson is shifting to the centre position for the Times. It is confirmed. Desi confirmed it online. What are your thoughts on this? This allows Jaden Campbell to play fullback. Uh, there was reports that Keo Keeney was training the house down and he's fighting for that position as well. But Campbell will get first crack. What are your thoughts? Brimson at centre. I think he is one of their better players at the side, but mm. to, to make this rotation kind of thing work, oh, I like it. Yeah. like He's an interesting player, isn't he? He's got an interesting body size for compared to other fullbacks. The smaller guys are usually a bit slimmer and agile. Yeah, a bit more... Um, have a bit more speed, or you've got those bigger sort of dudes. He's, I feel like he's never really nailed it. He's still a good fullback. Um, five eight, I think he's a better fullback than five eight, in my opinion. Um, the centre, I, I, I don't know how it, I feel like he's kind of got a little bit more to offer. I don't, I don't know how great his defence is. Like, I've never really paid attention to his defence when he's playing. Five eight or or whatever, so I don't know how he'll. He's got he's got short term speed and stuff, so I think that'll be all sweet. Um, he's got a little bit of creativity from obviously the halves and the fullback. Maybe maybe it does complement him. You know, I just I can't picture it. I feel like he, I don't know. It just feels like he might get. It might take him a little bit to sort of find his yeah, feet of and course. find his. He's played a lot of – Sorry for position. Sorry for cutting you off. No, no, I'm no, asserting no. my dominance. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> you are definitely the alpha of the uh, pod <laughs> since um, that on the um, – that training the house down. I, <laughs> I actually like Brimson at centre. Uh, he's played a lot of 5'8", so I think the defence he can handle. Jaden Campbell can't play at centre. Yeah. I think just his body size, he's going to be targeted. But with Brimson at centre, it allows them to put Jaden Campbell back at fullback. He's and, r- uh, dangerous too. J- yeah, Jane and, Campbell. and the thing about this is Kieran Foran probably will retire after this year, so I think that allows Brimson to shift Back in, into number six yep. when that happens. So I think this is a stopgap for one year. But what I do like is that Jaden Campbell's put there. Brimson has had many years to nail that net nailed down that position and pretty much give Titans no option but to put him there. Yeah. He hasn't done that. He's a great player and a, a lot of people are just too scared to pull the trigger. I think sometimes you just got to pull the trigger when this happens. And I think someone like Jaden Campbell is absolutely going to prove his mark. He's he's been given the number 1 jersey and the fact that he's been given that, I think if he if he doesn't succeed after this year then it's a bit awkward cuz they kind of have to reassess, mm. but they're already investing in Tanner Boyd. I think long term, they're going into Jaden Campbell. But that being said, J- the argument could be against Brimson n- not playing fullback. Is he? Ha- he's been injured. He hasn't really had the time to, well, to shine. To say. But but for the Titans, I don't think they can go another year just shifting and changing their spine just because Brimson's always really, injured. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, you said like he's had quite a while there, but I've, that, it has always felt interrupted, whether they've just put him to 5-8 for a bit or he's been out of the game for a bit. And it didn't seem like you can picture him as, you know, the with the one on his back consecutively for long periods over that period, over that of his career. So it has been a bit disrupted. Jaden Campbell, though, like you say, I think the, the older he gets and the more he can grow into his body, he's, he's exciting. I think that's probably you, – you, I think you want that ruthless sort of attack from a fullback more so. I mean, Brimson kind of reminds me more of a Gutherson sort of style of fullback, a bit of a – bit more of a – I know he doesn't have the same workload as like a um, – Edwards and stuff, but just that less attacky style, but more of a, just a solid footy player. The Sean Bloor and Justin Olam swap has... Oh, did you hear that whistle? Yeah, Where, it, was kind <laughs> of, it was sharp too. <laughs> the Sean Bloor and Justin Olam swap between Melbourne and the Tigers has been confirmed. Who wins this trade? I think um, the Storm win. The Storm always win. Um, they turn, you know... Average footy players into gun footy players. He's, you know, has been projected to be a great footy player. So definitely the Storm. I think the Storm win as well. I think Olam had a career year in 2022. He moves on. And uh, I think once you kind of lose that leg and 
come off that career year, it's hard to come back from. So uh, they're really taking a risk in Olam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just getting your back, bro. You know, look, I'm th- you want to throw punches? I've got fucking punches, bro. Selwyn Cobbo has been confirmed to move to centre by Kevin Walters. What are your thoughts on this? I actually think this is a natural progression. Mm. Uh, he was a fullback coming through the grades, and obviously he just wants to get his hands more on the ball. But in my opinion, I think him on the wing, I don't think he needs to move there if he wants to become a fullback in the future. I think he works on his yardage game. I think he's going to be found out in centre a lot, but mm. yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Short-term speed might be an issue. You might have to work on that. Um, full defence, he's got a bigger body, bigger reach. He should be right. He's, yeah, he matches the Luttrell, uh, Inglis, Malmeninga mould. He'll be right there. Eventually, someone will pick him up as a fullback. I think. Yeah, and I think that's a natural progression, and pretty much that's the... He wants to be a fullback. Yeah. So that's the nat- the natural progression to get the ball playing into. If you're playing win, you can't really ball play too much. Volkman, uh, Ronald Volkman, uh, pretty much went to the St. George Laura Dragons. He was signed by them. He was released by the Warriors, but the contract wasn't finalized. They did a medical to Dragons and found out he needed a shoulder reconstruction. There is uh, there's a lot of different reports coming out here, but I think Volkman... Uh, I've heard some inside word. This is I'm only quoting this, but the Warriors did a medical. Uh, he got the reconstruction 18 months ago. And they pretty much come to the Dragons, and it's still no good. So the Warriors haven't done their due, gil- due, due diligence. Allegedly, yeah, allegedly. <laughs> um, St George Illawarra haven't, you know, made him get released and have trained him before the contract has been registered. Um, so they've got no obligation there. Yeah, so they've just released him, and he's without a club at the moment. So I feel sorry for Volkman. Yeah, but I don't have much to contribute other than good luck, and yeah. hopefully things work out for him. Well, that's yeah, that's the news. Volkman, uh, hopefully something happens and something sorts him out because I feel like someone like him, it's not his place to get his own scan and have a look and be like, oh, I need a reconstruction. Yeah, of course. That's it, the club take, care, club take care of that, yeah. Yeah, so the other day on TikTok, I did a top five breakout stars in 2024. I actually uploaded on Instagram as well. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, who are some players that come to your mind who you think are going to break out in 2024? Oh, it's on the spot. Jeez. So I did number one was Talis Duncan for me. Mm-hmm. Number two was Terrell May. Number three... I forget who number three was, but uh, number five was Ma- Maverick Guy. Number four was Jaden Campbell. And number three was – I honestly forget who number three was, but who comes to mind for you? Um, no one at the top of my head. I just sort of – like a deer in headlights. I would have liked to have done my homework <laughs> on this one. Probably someone – there's probably a few people I think that we saw a little bit of last year but not much of, like maybe that uh, Iro. From the Sharks. Yep. Um, Pia Kura, we didn't get to see a great deal of. I actually did oh, say Pia Kura was the number three. Oh, that three. was one of yours, yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're on the same page there. Yeah. Um, there's probably a few others. I'd like to sort of run my team eyes over the team. I can't really think of it off the top of my head, sorry. Elias Katawa? Well, I think he sort of broke out quite a fair bit himself last year. I think he'll continue... As we discussed on the Super Coach Pod, I think he'll have a great year again. Um, he didn't have a great amount of games last year; he was off the field for a bit. Um, but if, yeah, if he can stay on the field for the whole year, it could be huge for sure. Um, I'm very excited for this year because there's a lot of young talent coming through, and a lot of talent that hasn't that has played but hasn't had the time. And a lot of these players are going to start to get the time this year. Um, So we're going to do our series, our preview series, which is previewing four clubs uh, each week. And we're going to pretty much say who we think their top five players are. So we're going to start off with the bottom four this week. And we're starting with the Tigers. Number five, Isaiah Papali'i for me. Number four, Jareem Buller. Number three, David Klemmer. Number two, John Bateman. And number one, Api Korosau for mine. Any rebuttals to that until you say yours? Actually, um, actually, I'll explain why. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got one different, I think, from what your five is. Oh, oh what's yours then? 
I can't remember which one's different from ours. I think you said Clemmer. I've got uh, Adam Dewey in that spot instead. Oh, that's a bad miss. Adam Dewey is – he's their best player when he's on the field every week. Yeah, Appy's pretty solid and consistent as well. Um, but, yeah, Adam Dewey's very threatening and ruthless when he's fit and going, yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to – preface i have not completely across all player movements i have started doing my homework in here and i have got notes on some teams but i'm going to become more across that because it's important for super coach as well um but yeah do you want to talk more about the tigers and their top players i think they're pretty is there is there any that we you know you we maybe should be chucking instead I think I mean Bateman and IPAP have proven themselves over. Yeah, I, a couple I think of seasons. I think the reason I put IPAP at number five is just because IPAP could be higher. Yeah, but I think the fact that he had two breakout years at Parramatta and then come over to the Tigers and hasn't really done much, I think that just kind of says to me more about Parramatta than it says. They about got IPAP. a lot out of him because we didn't yeah. see much, a great deal at the, when he was at the Warriors either. So I think it he, might be just hard to shine in a. a that's true, but I think he could well, easily... Could also should be easier to shine in a shit side too. Exactly. He should either be higher or lower, and I'm not sure where he's at at the moment. Like, I'm not sure if he's just underachieved because of the side or he overachieved at Parramatta. Yeah. So I think that's a massive watch this year. And Appy number one, I don't think we can argue that. Except for the Adam Dewey sort of thing that potentially as well. But Adam, Appy for consistency. Yeah, Adam Dewey, when he's on the field, is one of their better players when they play every week. But... And Buller as an up and comer um, last year, really sort of, you know, yucky side, did very well. When you put Buller in there, did you ex- not expect any bas- backlash or anything, but did it feel risky putting him in there no. or were you confident to put him in there? No, I mean, look, to be fair, the lower the side is ranked of the of the season, I've found it harder to to identify which yeah. are the best five because they're a struggling side. It's like the, when you got the, the top four sides or even the top eight, I feel like it's Easy. Not, not much room for negotiation. And I find in a lot of those sides too, up the top, it's usually purely their spine. Whereas some of the down these other lower sides, which might be a reflection of why they're not as solid, is it might be, you know, one of them's a prop, one of them's you know, a second rower, you might even have a winger or something like that. To yeah. Be but, um, yeah, that's just an observation I sort of made. But hmm. It's funny, Nofaluma would have been in that top five for a long time, but I think we've realised that Nofaluma probably isn't a culture guy. Like, especially from the reports we're seeing that he just doesn't want to train under Benji and stuff. Like, that's just poison for the clubs, right? Yeah, look, I've only heard little bits about that. I think maybe him going to Melbourne, Storm, hurt his love for the Tigers a little bit as well, just because... He realised what the grass, grass was, was greener. greener. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Dragons, you want to kick it off? Yeah, so I think I've got one, two, three, four, five. I oh, actually think I've got... No, I've got I really find this one hard. So I've got Hunt, um, Ben Hunt, obviously their best one. Uh, these aren't in any other particular order, but... Um, no, well, they have to be in order. Oh, do they? Okay, well, then Bird. Yep. Jack Bird. Then I'll go... Lomax, it's really hard, this next one. Like, uh, DeBellin or Jaden Sewer, I'm going to go probably DeBellin, then Sewer, um, and that's my top five. I've also my, I found it hard not to put Rabelar. I think he's quite a good winger. I think he definitely deserved to be high. He's not in my top five either, but I felt a bit dirty not putting him in because mm. I think he – kind of deserves a bit of credit but I also think he's so good I don't think he influences any any outcomes whereas these other players do I've got Ben Hunt good finisher yeah I've got Ben Hunt at number one Zach Lomax at number two Jack DeBellin at number three Jack Bird at number four and I've got Blake Laurie at number five I think Jaden Sewer just like he was an origin player he's come to the club and I think he's had some moments but Blake Laurie he's just in that engine room, just keeps them afloat. So I, I really like Blake Laurie. Um, yeah, and he had a career year just gone. I have Lomax at number two just because for a at long – At his best, he's elite. Yeah. yeah. For for a long time, the ball has struggled to get out to him, and I think he still showed that he's 
an elite player. Yeah, Jack Bird's a lot of it is on reputation as well too. He's found it hard to string a yeah. good consecutive games. Like him and Lomax are... Like based on time at St. George yeah, of the yeah. Lomax and Bird, you'd say very similar. I think Lomax is probably Lomax trying to probably be offered more. him a bit more, yeah. Um, but there's been a few darker days too yeah, <laughs> for him. But I'm also really excited for him to play fullback this year potentially. I really hope that happens. Yeah, it could be good for him. All right, the Bulldogs. I've got... Vili Army kick out number five. Yeah. I've got Reed Marnie number four. Josh Adokar number three. Stephen Crichton number two. And I've got Matt Burton number one. Oh, okay, yeah. So are our lists very different? No, controversially I've I've stuck massive fan of Matty Burton. Real big fan of him. But I, I've stuck Crichton at one. Um I, to I, be fair, I Stephen Crying could have it. been number one yeah. for me. I, I'm not saying I'm right, you're wrong. I, that's just where I've put him. Yep. I, I just I think he's a he's a game winner. Like he's a he's a real game winner. He's a big moment player and big game player. Like he he scored in every bloody grand final for the last four four years. Um, he's he's ruthless in those big moments where you need need an intercept to nail a play. For a guy that's in the centres, I think he's elite. I think he'll probably progress to, you know, fullback and offer. I think we've seen what Maddie's got. Maddie's Maddie Burton will be better with better guys around him. Um, but I, I would like to see a bit more consistency in. It's been tough because he hasn't had had the right partner for his five eight for a lot of the time as uh, with his yeah. halfback, but. Um, yeah, I just think it's been hard because Crichton's been at Penrith and, and, you know, so it's easier to look good in a good side, I think, as well. But, yeah, I've got Crichton, Burton. My order, I haven't necessarily got the order, but I'm going to have to try and nail it. So I'm going to go Crichton, Burton, Kikau, Marnie, and then Fox. But then there's a lot of new guys coming to the side that could potentially... A, a lot of these guys are kind of interchangeable. Like, at a car at three, like... Realistically, he doesn't change games. Like wingers, great winger. Yeah, wingers his little kick play he does for yeah. himself, and when he's run getting run out, he usually more times than not. Sorry to cut you off. Turns that into something. You know what I mean? Like we'll get the ball back and at least yeah yeah. I like his combination with Matt Burn when Matt Burn does an early kick and he just knows it's on. Yeah, he's so awesome. quick, and I think he's. The, the way he gets up the boys, like you can tell he brings an energy yeah, to a side. Yeah, more he offers than just what it is on the field. Yeah, and I, I think like a winger doesn't really make an impact on a side too much. Like I think Toto does a lot and yep. like these meter eaters does. Josh Adokar is not that type of player, but I feel like just based on influence and just him being there, g- gives him Matt Burnt the confidence to do what he does. He hasn't got much else there or he hasn't had much else there in the past. So I've got Burton at number one mainly because – I think in the years Penrith were doing well and Burton was there, Burton was a better player than Crichton. Do you think, think Crichton will kick? He's probably got a better percentage, yes, doesn't yes, he? Yes, yeah. he does. I reckon that, that he does. That could be a super coach thing, hey? Yeah, sure. it, yeah. Not to start or whatever, but just it, it could, identify that. It definitely yeah. could be. Um, but, yeah, kick out five. Uh, yeah. He's just there at five. That's I, fine. I guess they're. Oh, I'm not going to take it personally, even though <laughs> like I feel like he's, um, you know, biologically related to me. I just feel like he's in my blood. More of a brother. I'm more <laughs> of an uncle. Fijians. I found out I did New Year's with the yeah. Fijians. <laughs> so they told me, um, yeah, that they all call each other uncle as respect. So oh, nice. A, yeah, if they were, you know, it's a respect thing. Oh. Even the little kid, you'll call him uncle. Which is respect. I'm like, that's mad. That is mad. I like. I that. learned a lot about the. Uh, not a lot. I learned a little bit more than. Last time I went oh, there. You are sending me a lot of videos We did a hungy, and stuff. yeah. It's yeah, pretty bad. You, you were like putting food in like foil and then just chucking it in the dirt. Yeah, it's a hungy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Titans. Um, have you got yours uh, in order? Oh, I thought the Finns were ranked. What, what have well, I done? I what could have be wrong. I done? No, the, the I, do- I've just skipped the Titans. Do you mind if we... Or do I have to make them up? I can do it on the run. I can do it on I'll, the run. I'll do mine then first, yep, and then um, you can go off yep. that, whether you agree or disagree. Yep. I think it'll be easy, actually. I've got number number one is Tino. Yep. Number two is Fafida. Number three is Brimson. 
Number four is foreign. Number five, I haven't got a number five. I honestly like, I think a lot of that, I think I like Verils at five potentially, Fought a Waker at five. There's a lot of options that could go there. There's a lot of good players in there. Brian side. Kelly, when he's but then solid. is Bo Firma better than Brian Kelly? Like, yeah. And Philip Sammy, Khan Piera, Tanner Boyd. Oh, you couldn't put Khan Piera. Is he, I mean, he's, he's iffy, but he's not a yeah. better player than Tanner Boyd. I think there's a, clear, there's a clear top four. Yeah, so mine, I think it's, it's hard to. Tino, yeah. Look, I get why you've got him at one. It feels like the smart. Honest thing, I think emotionally, I like the excitement of what Fafita does. So I think I'm a little bit biased in wanting to maybe put them almost equal with each other. They offer something completely different. Um, they are Tino's really- just a uh, tackles, 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 you know, and he's. They're both elite at what they offer. Yeah. I, I find it hard to split them. I don't really want to. Um, I think Fafita will, will probably be more remembered. Years after he come because of his, like just what he could do. I don't like, think so. Well, um, Tino, this is my thoughts. Tino and Haas, I think, will be remembered as the Australian front rollers that dominated. Yeah, sure. That that's that's a fair argument. But I just think, as an individualist, he's yeah. He's there's there's no other David for feeder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tino is one of the best um, front rollers in the game. But there's just there's never really been anything like David Fafita. So yeah, yeah, I just yeah, I like him. I'm going to chuck him at one. I feel a bit guilty doing it, but I'm going to go him. Brimson three. Yeah, I feel or pretty foreign. confident with that. Four and probably over as a over a career form. Yes, but at the moment, what they offer in 2024. Yeah. Although he he was great last year, foreign. I think he still offers a lot. Yeah. And he brings a lot to the side, so that's and why. it's consistent. You know what <clears> you're getting. Yeah, so him and Brimson are hard to split because they're at different points in their career and stuff like that from what they offer for this year. And then that fifth spot, I'd, I'm I'm going to say Jaden Sutherland will, uh, Jaden Campbell will step up and claim that fifth spot yeah. this year. And obviously, we just talked about it with Brimson to centre. We we're happy with that because it allows Jaden Campbell to go to fullback because yeah, we reckon, think he can add something to the side, yeah. whereas Brimson can do his job from. He hasn't had enough footy. Consecutively yeah. as well, and I think if he can get that this year, then yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, there's our top five for the bottom four sides. We'll do that every week until the season starts. Obviously, the season will start a bit after we finish, so um, we'll bring some more content through for you throughout the season. I'm going to do this little segment for you. We usually do blind rankings here, but we've done a top five for every team. I can't just do another top five. Mm. So this segment is overrated or underrated. You've got to tell me whether it's overrated or underrated. So it's, I think it, I saw this. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube, and I think I saw that on a video that some other footy person done about six days ago. I it didn't is. watch it. Who was the it? The Buy Round okay, by yep. James Graham. So, Okay, shout out to them. Yes, Just thought we'd acknowledge sh- that. Shout out to them. I was, I was going to okay, preface sure. that. Um, I have taken a lot from them because I thought it was very interesting. It's not just players. It's it's not players at all, actually. It's definitely not. It's more of a nod to them to be uh, using the overrated, underrated than a... Well, it, it, it's a nod for them to not use players because usually a lot of people kind of say overrated or under. I don't. I think a lot of players are properly rated. The thing I, I, I like this segment, but I just feel negative saying that people are overrated. It makes me feel. I just feel yeah. like it's negative energy, and yeah. I hate saying no, that. No, I don't like, like it either. Who am I that this un, unsuccessful person in my life to then yeah. say that you're overrated? But I'll play for the sake of the game. I just want to preface some. No, this not, isn't about players. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. So Good. meat pies at the footy. Oh, great. I feel like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, none of it objects. That's fucking fine. Yep. Meat pies at the footy. Um, I love a meat pie at the footy. Yeah, I just get a bit nervous when I'm wearing one of my batter jerseys, like my older ones that I might get it. That are vintage. Yeah, so I usually be a bit picky in how drunk I am before I'm going to be able to have a pie or I'll just stick to the chips. Depends on how drunk I am. So I'm they're underrated, jerseys. properly rated? Properly rated. Properly rated. I think they're overrated. Okay. Prefer a hot dog. Shout out to Winston Neville. Hot dog guy. Yeah, my best mate hates hot dogs, and if, if he actually, I actually had a hot dog at the grand final. I and thought, he made me no, Winston loves my, hot dogs. Yeah, he's not my best mate. I thought he was. I've only met him once. We got on pretty much like a house on fire. I started calling Winston. You were real skeptical on him at the start, no, weren't you? I was. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? That's the, that, that's bullshit. By the way, I don't even know what that's about. But yeah. yeah, go on. Uh, the six again rule. 
yeah, uh, that's that's mad. So underrated, properly rated, properly rated. I think it's underrated because a, a lot of old codgers are yeah. like. They're like, oh, it's ruining the game, bloody yeah. six again. To, uh, I hate the pace. Well, of I like, I like, yeah. For me, I like it. I think it's a nat- it's right natural progression. Personally, I think it makes the game better. And I like think we, th- you made the right adjustment after twenty twenty one and made the six. It wasn't always six yep. penalties. A penalty in, within the forty. Yep. I yeah, I really enjoyed that too, and I think um, the fact that they've adapted so well to it is perfect for the game and the the game is the best product it's ever been for a long time. And I'm sorry. That's why we're taking it to Vegas, baby. Oak chocolate milk. Yeah, like it. It's rated. I mean, I'm not, it's not underrated. I just, I'm pretty in the middle with that. Yeah, I like it. I'll take so, it. I love it. So you've said properly rated. I prefer every- my, whatever my place is, though. So more than oak <laughs> at the moment. So get around my place. So you've pretty much said properly rated for the three we've done already. So you've sat on the fence for all of them. Yeah, I'm, oh, you know me, man. I'm a big fence sitter, man, you know. Whatever. The bunker. I just like something between my ass. <laughs> the bunker. <laughs> what? The bunker. The bunker. Or oh, fuck, fuck, fuck it off, eh? Like, or use it real well. I think it's... Be, be, yeah, I'll, I'm not smart enough to make the, the just someone who's doing that. Overrated or underrated? Underrated. Overrated. I agree. Overrated. Don't really. I think what happened to the days of the video ref, like, why... What is the bunker? Isn't the bunker just a video ref? Then again, with the technology we've got where we can really judge it and pull up to the amount of mistakes, we do need it. We yeah. do need it. So oh. it's – it's in. I'm not going to no, overrate or underrate. It's, no, it's, I think it's overrated, but I also think people want to say get rid of it, and I'm like, fuck that. Like, I don't want to get rid of this because what happens if your team loses – because they haven't called a blatant knock on that a player's picked up a ball and it's a knock on. They go on a score a try, win the game to get into a grand final. How shitty are there's you going to be? There's a lot of kerfuffles. Yeah, there's a lot of kerfuffles. For sure. Um, the captain's challenge. Oh, that's one of the greatest things, I think. Underrated. Yeah, so underrated. So good. I love it. And it puts the onus on the team, how they use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Origins in other states, so they... Outside New South Wales and Queensland, they yeah, take it to Yeah, I can't Adelaide, get around Perth. that. Like, uh, I think I don't know, if, if the game's going to spread to these other states, I really feel like it would have taken off by now. I, I, I just think it's going to – I can't picture it happening for another 10, 20 years. Really, like, I can't – I could be completely wrong, but I can't picture Western Australia being right into footy. Like, we might get some people in the States after this Vegas thing that might yeah. love it, but – it just seems that it's just like how how are we ever going to get into AFL? Like I watched it for one season, tried to get into it, it was only because I was more into the punt at that point in my life and was just trying to find something to punt on. But I don't really like watching it on TV. Apparently, it's great to see live. Personally, I think it's massively overrated. I get they're trying to grow the game, but if if some if give it, it to the people that have yeah wanted. if America yeah. was playing Brazil in a footy game or a, a sport we didn't. It'd be we're, rude we're, for us to ask no, to want to watch it over no, here. No, no. You know what I mean? If it was Don't between cut me off. I'm trying Fair. to get to something here. Fair. I think it's massively overrated because if you, if America and Brazil or uh, whatever country came over and tried to promote a sport that mm. we, we weren't into, like we knew about it but we weren't into it, how is someone in Australia going to be 100% invested in that sport compared to the people over in America and Brazil who are playing that? Yeah. That. I get Australia is in our country and New South Wales and Queensland, <laughs> that's who they're versing. Yeah. But how is someone in Perth or Adelaide going to be truly invested in state of origin because they're not like they're not from there. I get it's more like going to watch the circus. The circus is in town, so let's go see it. Exactly. Yeah. They're not gonna be invested in it like I mean, if they're a rugby league fan, for sure, but it's not like they're supporting and they've Gone for New South Wales their whole life. I think mm. sport is tribalism, and you kind of choose your tribe really early on. If we want to do, if if we do want to grow the game, though, I guess these are some of the things that we have to do. I just think they need to do better at growing it, like make it catch on in the other states, force it down their throat for fuck's sake until it catches on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree, but I also think like because it's a very good product. Yeah, I think what they're doing in Las Vegas is amazing. Like I love that, but. Taking it over to Perth or something. How about make a fucking Perth NRL team? That's how you promote the game. Yeah, they need to have a reason to want to 
like we we have a part in this, yeah. But then look, the, there's probably reasons I haven't done that so yeah. far yet too. Yeah. Players being interviewed at halftime. Um, I don't no. Nah, when they're coming off the field, it's very for me. I I think that's. I don't. I don't need it that much. It's just very much like, bit bit gassed. Oh yeah, bit bit gassed, Ronnie. Uh, you know, just oh yeah. As long as we just keep our heads down and you know, second half, yeah, we'll be all right. Just just let him go back, stay in his head, to have a chat to him at the end of the game. You know what I mean? I don't need it. I don't. I don't think you get much insight. Yeah, I found when they were on strike, I didn't miss it. So yeah, pre-game, I like to hear a little bit of. It's just get a little bit. A, a lot of generic stuff. I'd rather just pre game de- you get a vibe of you can kinda get like where they're at, or like a captain or a coach or something like that. If their attitude seems somewhere, it can also be wrong and they're just sort yeah. of like whatever. Maybe the halftime one just just scrap it. We don't need it. But put it, resources into something else. Mm. Uh, Cartwheels. Uh, almond milk and coffee. I got into it for a little bit just because of a change up. Just sort of, but I I'll uh just rate it fine. I, I'm I prefer the full cream though. I'm drinking almond milk in my coffee at the moment. Just I think you got me into it. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you why. Because it, w- we've been sitting here for an hour and a half and a bit. Um, it's kept well, and it's kept well. Like dairy just goes off a bit quicker. Uh, ball playing locks. Oh, they're underrated. Underrated. Yeah, definitely underrated. Yep. I think they're properly oh, rated. The knock. Is that the knock? Oh, yeah, we're six minutes late, bro. Yeah, we we're, we're wrapping up. up in a second. Um, I think they're properly rated, but they're overrated for sides that don't have them. So yeah, you don't need to force it. Yeah, yeah. Play to your strengths. Let's wrap her up. Um, we, we need to keep the keep the relationship nice, man. Okay. Uh, Thanks for tuning uh, one, in. One we'll more. See. One more. Brandon at the charity match. Underrated. Agree. Cheers for tuning in this week, lads. Um, And make sure to follow on YouTube and their sound recording platforms. We'll be back for On The Burst next week.